Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be going over proper topology for deforming joints on the body. I think I'll go over the deforming topology for the face in a separate video. There's a lot to cover there. So there's two main joints on the body. Um, there's the ball and socket and the hinge. Uh, the hips and the shoulders are the ball and socket and then the elbows and the knees are the hinge joints and then the wrist and the ankles and the neck are kind of hybrids of those. Um, they really only can bend well in two directions. They can kind of bend in, in four. But I'll, I'll go over that more. First I'm just going to start with the hinge joint. Show you how I lay out the topology for that and um, and then I'll show you on uh, a, a body's base mesh how it then translates to that. So I'll just start with the cube. I'll scale it up. Make it a little thinner. Mix it up. And I'll add three subdivisions along the width. Well, I guess it pumps it up to four. So, as far as hinge joints, there's always the rule of three or five. So you want your center edge loop, which will be the loop that, you, you always want it to be a clean loop, and then this will be the loop where the actual divide of one mass bends along the other. And the three to five is you can either have one loop on either side or two loops, depending on um, how big the joint is um, and how much you need to maintain volume and what you know the requirements of the poly count are and so on. There's a, there's a bunch of reasons why you would choose three or five. Usually it's just three. So for this example, this, let's say this is an arm or a leg. And that this is the front where the bending will take place, and this is the back, so this would be the back of the elbow or the knee, the front of the knee. Usually, when you're laying out your mesh, you want to just bend it ever so slightly in the direction, and this helps when you plot out your joints. It helps the joint know which direction you need to bend doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see a little bit better. Now I'm going to go into the multi-cut tool and I'm going to place so I'm going to place the uh, the two joints on either side of the center. So the, these two on the outside are generally just to maintain volume. And I wouldn't consider these uh, support joints for the, the deforming joint. These are really maintaining volume loops. For the, the joint, you want it to be very close and pinched in. And something else you can do to help maintain volume and, and support the joint is take the inside of the loop and W and pinch it in even further. And so you can think of this like an accordion. Whereas if this is this back these three back or yeah, these faces back here are going to be bulging out and these faces in here are going to be pinching in. You you want a broader surface area back here to be able to maintain volume. So I'll just Add another couple edge loops, smooth it out, delete these faces, delete. and then I'll plot some joints, joints, skin, skeleton, create joints, and then I'm going to go to the front, place one here. Place one in the middle and place one on the end. 
shading extra joints just so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to take this middle. Oops. This middle joint. Go into my move tool and then hold down D and I can move this joint independently. So normally I'd, I'd be affecting every joint in the chain. You hold down D. You can then just shift this one joint independent of the others. And you want it to be slightly closer to the edge. If you look at the way the bone structure is in the arm, um, it's the hinge is closer to the outer side. Alright, so now that we have that joint chain set up, select the joint chain, select the mesh, skin, find skin, and here's I'm just doing joint hierarchy closest. Uh, distance dual quaternarian, um, just something quick. Now, let me turn on my edges so you guys can see. So, so this is what it looks like unsmooth. This is what it looks like smooth. And I'll select this. And you can see the way it pinches in. So let me go back to. So you can see how pinches in a little bit. You, you need to go through and paint the white for, you know, a better result. But you can see how it maintains volume a little bit better. Let me go back to the start. You can see it, this maintains volume better than this way, where we're stuck with a, a huge gap. Um, and then there's uh, another way I've seen this joint set up. You can add some support, um, like a, a support extrusion. So let me just control or shift alt D to delete the history on this piece of, I'll just show you before I had uh, a bunch of history on this shift alt D to clear that. And th that'll break the the rig as well. That's why you got to be careful about deleting your history. So then I select this and I'll go to multi-cut tool, turn off symmetry. So this, this setup is really just to maintain uh, better volume. I usually do not do this. I usually just stick with the three to five loops because I don't like how this creates pulls um, very close to the deforming area and can cause uh, some weird issues. Um, but this is something that I have seen on a lot of rigs. Uh, it'll look a little strange if I smooth it out because this is so low poly. You need to go in here and relax this a little bit more but that'll break what we had from earlier but if I go in here I'll select the joint and the mesh find the skin again don't know how well you'll be able to see this but it helps maintain some of the volume there and here's another thing to keep in mind I think no matter what if you want really good deformation on these bending joints, uh, you're gonna have to go in and, and paint uh, or, or build corrective blend shapes. So to me, I prefer just to paint those shapes with cleaner topology and not have these uh, five-side bowls here. All right, that pretty much covers it as far as the hinge joints are concerned. And I'll bring in this male base mesh, and I'll just show you here. I really don't have the pinching done here, but you can see on the knee, here are the three tighter joints. Uh, and then this is the center where the, this is the pivot where the total um, deformate, or the hinge where the deformation takes place along this clean loop. And you can imagine this really helps with painting weights because you can just 
know exactly like from this edge downward it's you're going to need the uh, the face is weighted to this joint and from upward of this loop uh, the joint above all right so the next thing we're going to talk about are the ball and socket joints and for ball and socket i'll just show you on this first when you extrude, there's not really the, the rule of three or five. You want a number of clean loops, but what you want to do is have those loops flow into the mass where the joint is coming out of so that you're hiding the poles. Um, in, uh, you're hiding the poles where the deformation is not going to happen. So if you look... This, I think, is where the extrusion is, and you've got poles here, and this is the first clean loop here, and this topology is not perfect, so you'll have to forgive me, but we've got a clean loop here, and a clean loop here, and it looks like there's a bit of an extrusion here to help maintain volume up there. But if we look up here on the shoulder, it's the same deal. I think this is where the extrusion is. And then several clean loops flowing into uh, the torso. And this is really important for... Um, the, the ability to rotate in three, 360 degree angle. So you don't want, what you don't want to have happen is have your topology on a grid and then just have a hole down here at the base and extrude right from there and then your extrusion would be flat along, um, you know, perpendicular to the ground. You, you wouldn't want that. Or parallel to the ground, not perpendicular. So let me hide this guy and I'll show you guys on cube as well. Scale it up. So let's just think of this as like a, a torso. And I'll add some cute or some divisions. And I'll just Gulped a little bit to make it a little bit more of an organic shape. And I'll smooth it out. So if we're going to extrude a shoulder from this middle poly here, what we want to do is take these verts and push them out and into the body so that when we extrude, control E for extrusion, we can extrude, scale a little bit. You know, a little bit, and then control E again, and then start to uh, pull out our shape. And then you'll have to go in and, and shape this a little bit better. And then you can come in and add additional loops, but you want. The point that I'm trying to show is that you want to hide these poles in the torso area where there won't be as much deformation. And then you can continuously add loops. Oops. And then come in and shape the, the shoulder area. Um, that's essentially how I go about or my, my workflow when I'm trying to, you know, make the ball and socket joint. So lastly, 
Let me hide this. I'll bring back the body. I'll talk about the neck and the ankles and the wrists, which are kind of a hybrid. Generally, it's similar to how you would set up a ball and socket joint to allow for full rotation. Um, you, you do want clean loops. That, that's pretty much the, the main point is you want one clean loop where it bends like a hinge. So the wrist really bends um, up and down and has limited movement trying to move from uh, left to right. Uh, but you still want these support loops on either side to you know help maintain volume and allow for that somewhat 360 degree motion. The wrist is a special case because it, it twists and that really is happening, that motion's happening because of the, the way the forearm bones are set up. Uh, same with the neck. Gotta have at least a couple clean loops. I don't think I have too many clean loops because uh, I have some extrusions and I'm hiding some, uh, or I'm terminating edge loops from the face, but somewhat clean loops. Uh, and this allows for that three, 360 degree rotation. So uh, if I turn on soft mod, you can see, oops, turn off symmetry. You can see how those clean loops allow you to um, move the topology easily in the 360 degree motion. And then same with the ankles. Just uh, a set of clean loops. I think this is probably the main deforming one. Um, the foot would then pivot up and down. And again, the foot can kind of twist from side to side. So you just want a couple. Well, well, it's not perfectly clean. There's a break here, but you see it's mostly following a grid and that allows uh, to get all the, uh, the t or the deformation you need in there. All right. So that pretty much covers it as far as deforming joints. If you had any questions about what I went over in this video, uh, leave, leave me a message in the comments. I try to get to all of them. And if this was helpful for you, leave me a like, subscribe, share. All right, and then I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.